video, the most powerful antioxidant you can drink in the morning. And also, a vitamin everyone should take if they are over 50. And also, a simple trick that always makes me look good with my clients. Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. There are 9 things I wish every single kidney patient knew about. Or at least those that actually want to improve their GFR number. I mean, if you are here, if you are one of my subscribers, you probably already know that knowledge is everything if your goal is to improve your kidney health. Many of you guys are actually finding strategies that work for them and that were able to help them achieve an improvement in kidney function and GFR number. And you know how is that possible? Because you are getting informed and because you are smart and knowledgeable about the most important topic of all, your own health. So let's start this video with a piece of advice that is actually coming from one of you guys. Number 9. Hack your breakfast with matcha tea. So, in some of my recent videos, I recommended to start your day with green tea and the reason is simple, antioxidants. There is really solid scientific evidence to prove that if your goal is improving your kidney function, you want as many antioxidants as possible. Because, you see, they are dialysis patients that were able to stop doing dialysis thanks to antioxidants. And green tea is the best source of antioxidants on earth as soon as you add some lemon to it. Or is it? So one of you guys named DCTY321 asked me this question, isn't matcha tea just green tea but with more antioxidants? So I decided to look into that question over a cup of matcha tea. Yeah, I really love this stuff. I made a lot of recipes with matcha tea because it has L-theanine, which makes you smarter. I mean, not to brag, but I just aced a BuzzFeed quiz. And I bet DCTY321 drinks a lot of matcha tea as well, because that's a smart question. Or maybe he's a matcha tea salesman. Just kidding, but is matcha tea actually better than green tea? Well, it turns out that EGCG, the most abundant catechin in green tea, is also found in matcha tea in a concentration that's almost three times that of green tea. Which is like saying that if green tea is a Prius, matcha tea is Tesla. But this antioxidant also comes with one issue. It's not very bioavailable. It's not very absorbed by intestine. And once absorbed, it's quickly metabolized by the liver and then excreted. Yeah, that's like having a Netflix subscription but no internet. Okay, okay. Don't worry, because here comes the hack. If you want to turn matcha tea into a powerful ally in your battle for kidney health, add a teaspoon of MCT oil to it, a pinch of black pepper, and have it with some vitamin C rich fruits, such as an orange, a kiwi, or some berries. Vitamin C is key here because it can enhance the bioavailability of EGCG by 5 times or more. By also adding MCT oil, which is incredibly healthy by itself, by the way, you will also slow down the intestinal transit of the antioxidants, making them absorb better. And then, piperine, an active compound found in black pepper, can inhibit enzymes that metabolize EGCG, thereby increasing its bioavailability even farther. Yeah, this is gonna be just like, you know, supercharging that Tesla. And if this sounds too complicated for you, yeah, just stick with the green tea and lemon. Next tip, this one comes directly from me. Number 8. Always take CoQ10 if you've blown out more than 50 candles at your last birthday. Okay guys, do you remember the study I was showing you about dialysis patients that were able to gain back their kidney function? Wow. That's great. They didn't do that with green tea. They did that with one of the most powerful antioxidants in the world, 
CoQ10. But what's so special about CoQ10, you may ask? Well, the thing about CoQ10 is that it acts just like a vitamin. When your levels of CoQ10 are too low, you are going to experience serious symptoms. As we can read here, CoQ10 deficiency in kidney tissue results in nephrotic syndrome and renal dysfunction, which is like saying that no CoQ10 means no working kidneys. But is every kidney disease patient deficient in CoQ10 then? Well, not everyone, of course, but in medical literature, it has been observed that a big number of people is deficient in this molecule. In fact, I would recommend CoQ10 to everyone who is taking a statin or a beta blocker or in general to those over 50. These are some of the things that will seriously decrease your natural production of CoQ10. Now guys, as a naturopath, I won't just tell you to take CoQ10, I will also tell you how to take it, which is with selenium. Selenium can help activate the antioxidant effects of CoQ10, making it more effective while also protecting you from another kidney damaging deficiency. And guys, if you think this info is useful, don't forget to click the like button and also share this video on social media so more people will get a chance to see it. Okay, next health hack. Number seven, take turmeric if you have diabetes. Studies show that curcumin in turmeric can prevent weight gain, reduce blood sugar levels, and increase insulin sensitivity. This is what a large review study says about it. And turmeric is really great for anyone with kidney problems in general because it's a powerful antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. And everyone knows that turmeric should be taken with black pepper, at least, I hope. But I also have a little known fact about turmeric to share with you. The kidney repairing ability of turmeric are multiplied when you take it at the same time as an herb called astragalus. Recent studies found out that combining these exact ingredients can give you incredible results in terms of diabetic wounds healing. It can also help detox excess glucose from the body. And most importantly, this recipe can make the kidney function of patients in stage 4 of CKD go up by 2 12.4% in just three months. Now guys, the way I usually recommend taking these herbs is in a type of infusion called decoction. And I've actually shared this recipe in my recent video. It's up here and also down in the description if you want to watch it. Okay, here's a tip that's more like a magic bullet for diabetes and weight loss. So if you want to shed any extra pound you may have extremely quickly and without any effort at all, just take Ozempic. That's what all the celebrities are doing, isn't it? Wait, are celebrities really exploiting a diabetes medicine for their vanity projects? Doesn't matter. What really matters is if you should take it or not. Some people ask me what I think about Ozempic and if I would recommend it or not. They were afraid of the side effects and they also wanted to know if Ozempic is something I would discourage because it is not natural because as a naturopath you may think that i don't trust conventional medicine or that i don't like it well that couldn't be farther from the truth look i don't really care if it's natural or not i only care about what is proved by scientific evidence and what is not i mean our ancestors used to lose their lives by childbirth all the time and it was just because they were doing that in a completely natural way which was without washing their hands yeah don't do that truth is that we have medicines tests and procedures today that are not natural at all but they can still save your life and if you look at Zempic from this perspective well that is a real revolution we are talking about look diabetes high blood pressure and other causes of kidney damage are all linked to obesity all right unfortunately for many people with hormonal issues thyroid issues and for those taking medications losing weight naturally is not always possible so if someone would ask me should I keep it natural or should I use a medication if there is no other way for me to lose weight? Well, you know what my answer would be. By the way, guys, this is a topic that's worth talking about more. So let me know in comment section if you want me to go in deeper about the Zempic. Because of course, a Zempic has dangerous side effects. But are they as dangerous as the side effects of being overweight? 
Okay, up next, a tip for those of you guys that, on the other hand, are struggling to gain weight. Number five, if you can't gain weight, ginger and olive oil are your best friends. So in my videos, I always try to give you guys solutions that work in most of the cases. Because you see, CKD is an umbrella term that describes different pathologies. So of course, some of my subscribers have different needs from others. So bear with me for a moment or you can skip to the next tip. But you are also going to lose my joke about avocados and weight loss. Okay, you wanna hear it? Fine, here it is. What do you call an avocado that's lost too much weight? been okay so what to do if you need to gain not to lose but to gain weight well first of all if you have nausea eat some ginger before all of your meals i always recommend ginger because it doesn't just improve the body's antioxidant activity while reducing inflammation and insulin resistance it also works against uremic nausea which is a type of nausea that's very hard to treat because it's caused by kidney disease but where conventional medicine failed natural medicine provided a solution so eat raw ginger or add it as a spice or drink ginger tea right before for your meals it's going to have a terrific effect on nausea and also consider making frequent meals include some small calorie dense snacks during the day all right you see people on a diet may want to skip meals you on the other hand if you want to gain weight need to add some and these meals should ideally contain both healthy fats such as olive oil avocado nuts seeds and whole grains such as quinoa barley and brown rice bread is also fine either white or whole wheat and this is a great way to get extra calories and also fiber vitamins and essential nutrients yep time to unleash the snack attack it should make gaining weight as easy as pie which incidentally you should also eat no just kidding i don't recommend eating too much sugar okay up next number four here's a simple trick that always makes me look good with my clients get checked for vitamin and mineral deficiencies seriously i get people to do these tests way more often than you may think because they always have immediate improvements that they can notice when they discover and correct a vitamin deficiency so here's the thing doctors are not trained to look for nutritional deficiencies because they are pretty rare in the general population but if you have CKD, you have about 8 out of 10 chances that you have one or more nutritional deficiencies. I mean, that's the exact opposite of rare. CKD itself causes vitamin deficiencies, alright? And if that wasn't enough, most of the prescriptions given to CKD patients are also linked to vitamin enzymes and mineral deficiencies as well. So either if you are a CKD patient that wants to improve or if you are a healthcare provider that wants to look good with CKD patients, order tests for vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Now guys, the easiest way to get tested will be through your PCP or your nephrologist, but you can also order tests by yourself, even at home. Some names you may want to Google include Everly Well, Let's Get Checked, LabCorp and more. But I'm not endorsing these companies, just showing you that they exist. So do your research and decide which one is best for you. And of course, there are also clinics available where you can do walk-in blood tests. This is not something that requires a prescription from a doctor. Remember that most common deficiencies in CKD patients include vitamin D, magnesium, vitamin B12, folate, calcium, iodine, iron, vitamin C, and potassium. Wait, wait, wait. What? Okay, okay. What about potassium, you may ask? And I know that some of you are going to ask, so let's talk about it. Are kidney patients really at risk for potassium deficiency? For a long time, one of the first things kidney disease patients were going to hear from their doctors when diagnosed with CKD was, you have to avoid high potassium foods now, so no more potatoes, tomatoes, avocados, oranges, bananas, and more. And that restriction was wrong on many levels. And not just because dietary potassium is not really going to raise your serum potassium levels, also because as a CKD patient, you are just as likely to have too high serum potassium as you are likely to have 
too low serum potassium, all right? And I know that this may sound hard to believe, but it's true. And this is also confirmed by medical journals specialized in nephrology, such as the AKDH. So as we can see, the number of patients with too high or too low serum potassium levels are quite similar. But no one ever worries about those with too little potassium, which is something that damages the kidneys, by the way. No, doctors only worry about too high potassium. Okay, now the fun part. I mean, if it wasn't tragic. Doctors were never able to lower serum potassium levels significantly in CKD patients with hyperkalemia by forbidding fruit and vegetables. But here is the tragic part. Forbidding fruit and vegetables can absolutely cause several nutritional deficiencies. Do you remember that I was showing you that CKD patients suffer from an unusually high rate of vitamin deficiencies? Well, part of the reason why that happens lies in the fact that many patients are still being told today to avoid high potassium food items. Yeah, this is why if your doctor is still forbidding you from eating bananas and avocados, you need to find another doctor and to stop being afraid of potassium. And also, number two, stop being afraid of oxalate. Okay, let's talk about the other boogeyman of the renal diet, oxalate. A lot of people are worried about oxalate these days because they say eating foods rich in oxalates will cause kidney stones and damage the kidneys. And little did they know they were drinking this. So there are people out there telling you to avoid extremely healthy foods such as spinach, rhubarb, beets, legumes, nuts and more. But when you do that, you will have very hard times improving your kidney function. Hey, but at least you are not going to risk kidney stones, right? right? No, not at all. You are still going to risk kidney stones as much as before starting to avoid spinach and rhubarb, maybe even more. And let me explain. As we can clearly read from this study, the primary source of urinary excretion of oxalate is not the food you eat, it's your own body. So think about this for a moment. Even if you are religiously avoiding spinach and rhubarb, you may still have kidney stones and kidney damage because your body makes more oxalate than what you eat anyway. So does that mean that anyone with risk factors for kidney stones is doomed? Well, no, it doesn't. Luckily for anyone suffering from this painful condition, there is a solution that doesn't involve avoiding foods that are super healthy. It's drinking more water and adding calcium carbonate supplements. Do you remember what they say about oxalate? That oxalate is an anti-nutrient because it binds to other nutrients? Well, you can use this property to make oxalate completely innocuous. Just take between 800 and 2000 milligrams a day of calcium carbonate before the main meals to hack your risk for oxalate stones. And if you avoid being dehydrated, you will also slash the ability of oxalate to crystallize into stones. Okay, time for our number one now. So we have seen two minerals most skinny patients should stop being afraid of. For a nice change of pace, let's take a look at a mineral that you should be extremely scared of and I'm talking about phosphorus. Okay guys, I'm not a fan of demonizing foods or nutrients, but there is one exception that I gladly make to that rule and it is phosphorus. Seriously, I wish more people were scared of it. I mean, the other week they changed the recipe for my favorite whole wheat bread and they added phosphate to it and I almost freaked out. Yeah, phosphorus is also very bad for the general population, but those with kidney disease should be even more careful. And why, you may ask? Well, having too high phosphorus levels, which happens when you eat foods such as meat, fish, dairy and processed foods with phosphate additives can lead to kidney failure, dialysis and death. On the other hand, there are documented cases in medical literature of CKD patients who were able to reverse the decline of their GFR just by reducing their phosphorus intake. Watch my video up here and also down in the description if you want to know more about that. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.